Uh, th this morning, uh, again, my message has changed about three times already this morning. But I I'm going to stick with a basic scripture. Uh, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. And, and again, I know we've got uh, something on the schedule for today. So I, I pray that uh, we won't be here all morning. Lord said the same. Amen. We can have you out of here in, in no time. First Peter chapter 3, and let's go to verse 8. We'll start at verse 8 and read through verse 10. First Peter 3, 8 through 10. It says, finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. That's it. That's, how, that's where I'm starting this morning. I, I'm, I'm amazed at how many scriptures point to relationships in the Bible. And God is not just concerned with our vertical relationship. He's also concerned about our horizontal relationship. Vertical meaning our relationship with him and horizontal meaning our relationship with the people around us Because as I read through the scripture God is really concerned about your sons your daughters your marriages he, About your church members. He's concerned about well, let me put it this way. Whatever you care about God cares about it. Okay, and I don't know any person here uh, if you are you know, maybe we need to exchange places today who has not dealt with some relationship issues. <laughs> hey, say amen, somebody. Amen. And most of us have struggled in those areas, and I'm not just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about relationships with people. And most of us have struggled in that area, but in the scripture I read, especially in verse 10, it says, for he who would love life and see good days. Look, look at what it says. Let him do what? Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Which means that me enjoying my life is contingent upon a couple of things. The first thing it's contingent upon, and the scripture points it out, is that uh, he wants me to, see, have, to love life and he wants me to see good days. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Did you know that? Yeah. He wants you to love life. Amen. He don't want you stressed out and worried and concerned about stuff. He wants you to live a good life. Amen. And as I've been saying for the past couple of Sundays, he wants you to enjoy life. And, and if you ain't enjoying life, there must be something missing from what you're doing. It ain't nothing that God doesn't want for you. And what we're pointing out today is just one, everybody say one. one. Is just one ingredient to living your life and living a long life. And he says, let's go back. Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit or guile. Every time you speak well, you are a blessing. Yes. Yes. See, I know this might be a little rough one today because they're bringing all that food through you and it's smelling smelling good. Would y'all work with me just for a minute? Yeah. Everybody say, speak well. Speak well. <laughs> now, what's the opposite of speaking well? Speaking bad. Or well, the Bible says, speaking evil. And, and whenever you talk evil about folk and say bad things about people, yeah. let, me, let me tell you what happens. You don't love life and you don't see good days. Does that, Sister Kathy has a word, does that resonate with anybody? Yeah. So if you, ain't doing, if you ain't loving life and seeing good days, it might mean that you've been putting your mouth on people you ain't supposed to. Now most of us don't, oh, that's just something small. Well, let me tell you something. 
God is concerned with the intricate details of your life. So while you roasting everybody at home, anybody know what I mean by roasting everybody at? While you at home over your dinner table and you roasting folk, the only thing you're doing is making for not enjoying life and seeing good days. Hunt your name and say, you won't know how come you ain't enjoying. It becomes a self checkup because everybody, we have been, listen, we have become hot wired. We have become hot wired to speak death to our life. It's just a, a human frailty that all of your vocabulary is filled with death defying words. Oh man, I almost laughed till I died. You know you wasn't gonna laugh. You wasn't gonna die from laughing, but you say it anyway. It's spilled because Proverbs eighteen twenty one. You ain't got to go there. You ought to know it. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. So in order for me to have a horizontal relationship with people, then my vertical relationship with God says this: If God, what God wants me to do, that's what I'm gonna do. Which, which enables me now to get along with everybody in my space. I just can't get along with everybody. I just got to be me. Well, maybe me need to change. Amen. See, we, we've overblown and overemphasized this whole individuality thing. You're thinking that your life here on earth doesn't matter to anybody. Everybody say, I'm a light. Irvin talks about it all the time. If we are a light in darkness, then I got to make sure that my light ain't got no mud on it. Go ahead, See, a light bulb can still be lit and still be working, but if it's filled with mud, it's on, but it ain't shining. It's not illuminating anything. And the Bible says that our life is supposed to be illuminating to everybody who we come in contact with. Now, you know, it ain't going to be one of the things where I see light. Yeah. But they see what you do. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why they don't under say they don't understand me. They don't understand me. Now, anybody ever said that? Well, you just don't understand. Well, ain't nobody for them to understand. It's for you to show. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Listen to this. You can determine where your faith is as it relates to other people by how you talk to them. Now I know some of you, some of you are dreaming now. That, what did I say yesterday? So all you got is today. <laughs> Stop being concerned about yesterday. All you got is today. Get today right. Just start checking your words today. And you'll have the opportunity because we're all going to be fellowshipping today. And, you know, up close and personal, sitting out eating with folk. And, you know, you got to make sure your mind ain't wandering. Look at that. See, everybody, everybody looked over there. They saw them. Wasn't well, nobody looking at me. Everybody looked over there. Everybody say, focus, focus. Focus. The devil is filled with distractions. You know, you know, you know this might be minute, but this is one of the messages he does not want you to hear this morning. I want you to hear him. Because we struggle with vocabulary and words that come out of our mouths, especially when it's hurting people. Yeah. Some of you in here don't have a kind word to say to or about anybody. Oh. Everybody say words. words. Every time you speak well, you're blessing somebody. Do you get that? Yeah. I said every time you speak well of somebody, you're blessing them. Yes, yes. How much effort does it take for you to speak well to somebody and not say something all crazy? Uh -huh. How much effort does it take? How much effort does it take for you to say, I love you to somebody, even though you don't like nothing they're doing? Yeah, you, anybody ever tried that? A, a few years ago, uh, Brother Johnny Harris was here, and he, and he, said, he made a statement. 
He said, you can't argue with somebody and tell them that you love them at the same time. Yeah. And you know something, I, I challenged him. I said, man, that ain't right. Yes, I can. And God said, go home and try it. And what better place to do it than at home? So I went home and started an argument. <laughs> Same day. But right in the middle, no, and, but right in the middle of it, I just checked myself and said, you know, I love you. Yeah. And not only did it melt her, it melted me. And the argument stopped, everybody say, right then. Right then. Because you can't love and have fear and hate in your heart at the same time. One's going to trump the other. And the Bible says love covers. Everybody say love covers. Love covers. So if I act out of love with them, then everything's okay. We, we get the opportunity around here to see a lot of stuff. Say yeah. yeah. I mean, and I'm not talking about all positive things. As a matter of fact, in a ministry like this, we probably see more negative stuff than we do positive stuff. But it's up to us, as, especially me and Urban and the rest of the leaders around here, not to pay attention to the negative, but to accentuate the positive. You know, that was a song that went something like that, but we ain't going to sing it today. But it says that as long as I'm seeing the positive, everything's supposed to be all right. No, that ain't true. Because your senses will somehow focus on the negative stuff, and I've got to watch now the connect between what I see and what I say. Yeah. Because I see something don't mean I got to say it. Yeah, go ahead. If you don't get nothing out of the day. Because see, your sights will keep your faith from working. Yes, yes. Everybody say restoration. 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 Now, how, how many leaders in here, I'm just talking to the leaders, and I'm going to get to the everybody else. How many leaders here have been tempted first thing in the morning to get in a little group and talk about everything that go on here? And then it becomes a real struggle to readjust for the rest of the day. Because it seems like the more stuff I talk about that's negative, the more negative I'm made to see. It's like it exponentially grows. And it didn't start out that bad, but the more bad I talk about, the more bad I see. Everybody said, that's the enemy. That's the enemy. Because I have just called those things that be not as though they were on the negative side. So now I'm seeing more negative because that's what I've been feeding. And now I'm faced with now challenging what I see and speaking opposite to what I see to what I want to say. Don't ask me to say that again. Everybody say because it's faith stuff. Man, the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Now I got to find out now how do I relate my faith walk to my relationship walk. Because everybody ain't loving. Okay, let me say this. Everybody ain't easy to love. Now, I'm not telling you what category you fall in. I'll let you do that on your own. But in spite of what, it look, what they look like, God has mandated us not to put our mouths on them. Yeah. And we use scriptures like, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Well, don't, don't you realize that we're all those? It ain't just Irvin. I can talk about you. You ain't no, you ain't no prophet. The Bible said, touch not my anointed. Hunt your name and say, you anointed? Yeah, every person in here is anointed. So that means you can't talk about nobody. Okay, say this with me. Change your words. Change your life. 
All I got to do is watch what I'm talking, what I'm saying about people and to people. My whole life is going to change. How does that work? I don't know. I don't know that formula. The only thing I know is God said it. I believe what God says. So now it's up to us to do what God says and we'll expect the results that God says we expect. And the results of speaking good things are long life and enjoying life. Everybody say, I want that. I want that. Now, most of us have trouble with our words because we don't know the things that we need to talk to. Most of the time when you see people exhibiting bad behavior, what's the first thing we talk about? Their behavior. Everybody say, stop. Stop. Because the only thing that happens when you talk about their bad behavior is that you get more bad behavior. Now here's where the principle comes in. I have to now call those things that be not as though they were. When my wife is, is acting like Satan's sister, I don't have to say, you're acting like the devil. Because that's the first thing that comes to my head. Oh, that's another thing. Let me stop right here. Stop saying the first thing to come to your head. That one will get you in trouble. Come on, anybody been there? You know, you and see around you. You'll only do that do that around people who you know you can hurt. That's right. Yeah, you only do that around people who you know ain't gonna do nothing back to you. Now, somebody who you sort of got a little fear of, you watch what you say. Yeah. Oh, that's good. No, y'all, y'all, all messy. This is real stuff. I'm trying to figure out who the biggest dude in here. Aaron, stand up. Yeah, now look at look at look at Aaron. He's now he might be a little teddy bear as far as but I, you know I turn around a minute. Now the man got tattoos all in his head. Got tattoos all over his body. You know, just the mere fact of looking at him, I'm gonna watch what I say. No, I'm, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I, I love you, brother. You know, but but I'm just saying, appearances can sometimes make you put a guard on your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, anybody, you, you sit down. Thank you very much. But anybody else, you run off your mouth and say anything to them. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you? You know, everybody like to be bad. You know you. And all you're doing is selling wolf tickets. You ain't, you ain't going to do nothing to nobody. But you'll talk a good game. Everybody say words. words. See, change your words, change your life. Yeah. I, I want to I introduce you to something. Everybody ain't scared of you. Yeah. <laughs> I might need a guard before I leave here today. <laughs> But let me, let me, but, but this whole thing, everybody say, I want to, I want to enjoy life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part of enjoying life. I, I, I relish when people say, oh, you don't talk much. Because I learned that fools open their mouth a whole lot. Is he, is he calling me a fool? Well, the Bible says I can do it if I can prove it. And the Bible calls a fool this, one who just runs his, his or her mouth constantly, never stop talking. Let me say that again. Never stop talking. Now, this would be a good time to look down. Everybody say words. words. Man, words mean a whole lot. Most of us now, our whole future and our present has been dictated by words that we've heard. The Bible says this, and I touched on a little bit of this Wednesday night, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, fear can come by hearing. So it depends on what you've been hearing. And, and wouldn't it be nice if you got a, a, a CD player in your car that every time you got in your car, you plugged in a, a tape of Irvin and, and everywhere you went, you heard Irvin's voice. Because faith comes by hearing. 
instead of putting on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who bop the bop bam. I don't even know some you know, I used to know some of them words. So I'm, I'm, rather, I'm an old school player uh, because I remember the old song, old stuff. Some of that stuff they got now, I don't, I don't really, I, I, I can't even understand half of what rap is all about. Well, we've got little kids, see this little row right here, I bet I, bet I can name some stuff, they know every word. He said, no, my, my, my man said, no, not me. Well, I'm, I'm glad. But most of that stuff spells nothing but trouble. I, I, I pulled up beside a guy the other day, and he had his bass thumping, and they were saying some words. I'm saying, dang, that's, that's, that's X-rated. And I had to wind my window up. Because faith comes by hearing. I'm, I'm going to prove it to you. you ever been, I went to a, a, a barbecue joint uh, this weekend, and their smokestack, their, their fan was, their, their um, exhaust fan was broken. So the whole place was smoking. And they had the door open. And, but, but what happened was, I went in and I ordered, and I wasn't doing no cooking. But guess what I smelled like when I came out? Barbecue. I smelled like I've been cooking barbecue, yeah. So, uh, what's the lesson? The lesson is this, hang around folk who say what you don't want to say, and you'll end up saying what they said. Yeah. I'm stronger than that. Yeah, you are. That thing will slip out before you know it because it, you're, you are affected by what you hear. I said you are affected one way or the other by what you hear. So what better way to change your life than to hear the word of God? Constantly hear the word of God. Now, go to Mark chapter 11. And go to verse 14. This is a story about Jesus and the fig tree. And I, I want to show you something. Everybody say words. words. Okay, verse 14, Mark 11, 14 says, And in response, Jesus said to it, it meaning what? The fig tree. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Everybody get that? Look, look at what. In response, Jesus said to it, the fig tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Now, now, now go to verse 21. I'm going to show you something. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Well, in 14, Jesus never cursed the fig tree. I'm going to say it again. Jesus never cursed the fig tree. But he said, let no one eat fruit from you forever, which are negative words. So negative words are the same as cursings. So your words not only must have content, your words also have character. Okay, you'll, you'll get that one tomorrow. You can talk words of defeat and think that you aren't cursing. Well, he ain't gonna never straighten up. I'm gonna say it again. She ain't going to never be the wife I want. My kids, they're just like the devil's little kids. Hallelujah. Now, what have you just done? You just cursed them. So the principle is call them what you want them to be. Not what they are appearing to be. You call them what you want them to be because that was Jesus' way. That's God's way of doing things. 
Everybody said that's faith. That's faith. faith. Yeah. You don't walk up and just because you see me acting ignorant, you say, oh, he sure is ignorant. <laughs> no, you look at him and say, oh, he's the smartest man I know. <laughs> And that's it. It's a challenge because we're so used to calling things the way they are. And in Genesis, go, go there, Genesis 1. Shouldn't have no trouble finding that. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, what did God say? He said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, you know that's not, how, that's not what we would have said. If that had been us, when we looked out among the darkness, the first thing we would have said is, whoo, sure it's dark out here. <laughs> because we're prone to say what we see. Yes. So what do you do? You call those things that be not as though they were. You call them what you want them to be. Yes. Yes. When Jesus healed the withered man's hand, he said, stretch out your hand. How in the world can a withered hand stretch out? Because right. Jesus called it what he wanted it to be, not the way it was. Man, this principle works, ladies and gentlemen, if you, but you got to work the principle. It ain't something you can just think about. It's something you got to do. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you won't get that. Yeah. And most of it especially happens in our relationships with, our, relationships with your family. Because we're prone to have family. Y'all just came from a family reunion. I bet they talk about y'all today. I'm not, I better, I better not go there. I ain't going there. Because words, ladies and gentlemen, words. L listen. There are words that you can speak that can create a toxic atmosphere. You be around some negativity all day long and you breathe it in, it's toxic. And listen, you don't even know it's affecting you because it's like carbon monoxide. It's tasteless and you can't smell it, but it's having a great effect on you. Anybody know what carbon monoxide, it just puts you to sleep. And that's the same thing happens when you hang around a whole lot of negative folk, speaking negative stuff, talking about everybody and everything that they want to talk about. And sometimes you got to do like Jed Clampett. You got to get away from there. <laughs> Ken folks said, Jed, move away from there. <laughs> Being around them people ain't where you ought to be. So I'm going to load up the truck and move to Beverly. You, you got to, sometimes you got to get away from folk like that. Some of us are experiencing it in your home. Nobody has a good word to say about anything or anybody. And you got to balance this thing out because you can't stay by yourself all the time. Because most people say something like, I don't need nobody. You lying, you do need somebody. <laughs> Try hanging by yourself all the time. You could be a stark raving idiot. <laughs> Now, now I, I don't, don't stretch this because there's balance. Jesus talked to a lot of inanimate, inanimate objects. We just saw he talked to a fig tree. Jesus talked to storms. He, he, he talked to all kinds of inanimate objects. But when it comes to us, I ain't talking to no problem. Well, your problem sure has been doing a whole lot of work talking to you. Go ahead. Because that's what has created all the worry and anxiety in your life. Every morning it wakes up, you wake up, and it wakes up, and it tells you, I ain't going nowhere today. Yeah, go ahead. Matter of fact, I want you thinking about me all day long. And all you do is this. Yes, sir. That's all I'm going to think about you all day long. No, you need to call those things that be not as though they were. What do you want to see? 
You want to see lack or do you want to see abundance? Well, if you want to see abundance, stop talking lack and talk abundance. Speak abundance to your lack. Get around some people talking about how broke you are. No, let me tell you something. If God, if the third verse in the book of Genesis said, then God said, I'm just going to do like God did. Even though it might look dark, I ain't going to say how dark it is. Now, darkness is a reality, but I ain't in reality. I'm in the spirit. So I just speak spirit things to inanimate objects, and the inanimate objects disappear, and what I want appears. Because, listen, when light showed up, darkness left. Hey! So if you speak abundance to your lack, your lack goes and abundance moves in. But we'll always be tempted. Everybody say tempted. Tempted by the deceiver to start talking about what you see. He'll always send somebody your way so that you can exercise your sensory connection with your mouth. You got, you got $20? I'm blessed of the Lord. And my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That wasn't the answer to my question. Well, that's the one you're getting. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, they think you're crazy. Check this out. When you walk by faith, you might look stupid. Yeah. Oh, come on now. When it comes to the things of God, I don't mind looking stupid because the Bible says he uses, uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So it might look foolish to you that I'm calling abundance out of lack, but God said that that's the kind of thing that would work for me. And I'd just much rather work it the way God said work it. Amen. Listen to this. Faith is released by speaking. Yeah. Your faith is released by speaking. Stop being so concerned about who hears you yeah. as much as what hears you. Yeah. Go ahead. You're so concerned about who's going to hear you, I could care less. Yes, Let me tell you something. You ain't got a heaven or hell or a million dollars to give me. So if you hear me saying I got something when I'm not showing any sensory evidence of it, oh well. Oh well. I'm talking God talk. I'm talking faith talk. My language might be different from yours, but let me tell you something. This one works. Because the Bible says that all things invisible or visible were made by things that are invisible. So while I'm talking invisible, pretty soon it's going to be visible if I hang in there long enough and don't let my faith faint. It will appear. Don't, don't, don't y'all realize what, where y'all sitting? You sitting in a miracle. And look, and look. It did not start by Irvin wringing his hands together, getting in the tree with a nervous bird. Y'all yeah. didn't get that. The Bible says God clothes the lilies of the field and feeds the sparrows. Anybody in here ever seen a nervous bird? Yeah. Matter of fact, you get up early in the morning, all you hear is birds praising God, thanking God. For today, everybody say this day. this day. They ain't worried about tomorrow. Yeah. They're thinking about today, yeah. what God's going to do today. Yeah. They ain't waking up worrying. Yeah. My wife tried to help the birds out. Every All the bread we got, she going to throw it in the yard. Well, that, that's good. But even if she didn't throw it in the yard, the birds are out there saying, oh, I wonder what I'm going to eat today. <laughs> You have never 
seen a nervous bird. Matter of fact, anybody ever seen an eagle? I mean, a real eagle. I ain't talking about one. A, a real eagle, man. He's just so rested. He just soars. He ta- he allows. Oh Lord. He allows the turbulence in the air to lift him above his trouble. The only thing he does is lock his wings. And his trouble lifts him high above what he's currently experiencing. They wrote a song about it and it said, does Lord lift me up where I belong? See, I belong where? The hallelujah. I belong where? Up. You can walk around here with the turkeys all you want to. <laughs> Come on now. Turkeys. <laughs> Aaron said ducks. Well, I love a good duck. Anybody like duck? But they got to be cooked right. They kinda, they're a greasy bird. If you don't cook them right, they ain't no good. But a good, a good cooked duck, they make, oh, hallelujah. Best dressing a dumpling you ever want to taste. Now, how did I get there? I don't even know. Aaron, you did that. Yeah, you trying to distract me. I smelled chicken, but I was thinking duck. So, the, the Bible says this, speak what you want to see. The thing is, what do you want to see? In the book of Joel, he says, call those things that are weak, strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now, weak might be a reality for him at the present time. But he's calling himself strong in the, listen, in the midst of his weakness. Yeah, yeah. You didn't get that. In the midst of his weakness, he's calling himself what? Strong. strong. So in the midst of whatever you're going through, call it like you want it to be, not like it presently is. It works all the time. The enemy will deceive you into speaking negative things. Like I said before, because we, he has programmed death into the human vocabulary. It's programmed in there. And we just say whatever's on our mind, the first thing that comes to our head, we, we say it. Anybody ever been arguing and you don't finish the argument and you don't know what you said? Right. No idea. Because you was talking from here. I said you were talking from here. And you go, go to Romans chapter 10. I'm, I'm going to skip around because I want to be done in a couple minutes. Romans chapter 10. And then I want to go to a, 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 a nice scripture. A lovely scripture. Matter of fact, I, I love it. Romans chapter 10. And go to. Go to verse 4. Romans 10 and 4. We talked about some of these things this morning. That's why it was, it was sort of changing me up a little bit. Romans 4 says, 10 and 4, says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Listen at that. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who does what? Believes. believes. I, w- I want to I convey to you how important believing is to your speaking. I want to let you know how important believing is to what you speak. Because, see, you say a lot of things you really don't believe. I said you say a lot of things that you really don't believe. So I want you to get into the habit of just speaking what you really believe. Okay. Romans 10, go to verse 4. I had I read verse 4. Verse 5 says, For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. Listen, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. The righteousness of faith speaks in this way. 
Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it say? The word is near you, listen, in your mouth and in your heart. So faith is now in two places. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. Where's the first place? In your mouth first. Everybody's always talking about your heart. Well, let me tell you something. There is a heart and mouth connection. And the Bible says that the first place the word need to get is in your mouth. Then when it gets in your mouth, if you continue to confess it, it will eventually get in your heart. Yeah. Turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs 7. Words mean a whole lot. 7 and 1. My son, keep my what? Words. And treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live, and my law is the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Listen, write them on the tablets of your heart. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Write them, them what? Them words on the tablets of your heart. Well, how in the world do you write on your heart? We just heard Paul say, the word is first in my mouth and then in my heart. So if I get it in my mouth, it has an effect on my heart. Yeah. When we just read that he said, write them on the tablets of your heart, go down to Psalm 45. Psalm 45, verse 1. My heart is overflowing with a good thing. Ooh, I like that. I recite my composition concerning the king. This is what I want you to see. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So I can write on my heart with my tongue because even though I'm speaking, I'm writing. Yeah. 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 Because my tongue becomes a pen. Yes. Go ahead with yes. So what I speak gets in my heart. Yes. Yeah. What I speak gets in my heart. So if I speak negative stuff, guess what's getting in my heart? Negative stuff. If I speak the word, the word is getting in my heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, I'm going to go to this one little thing. Go to 2 Kings. I'm almost done. 2 Kings chapter 4. You've heard me and Irvin talk to this one. I, I love this. I love this. I, I love this one. It's about the Shunammite woman. Verse 8. <clears throat> Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, and as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and the table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. A lot of reading, but y'all bear with me. And it happened one day that he came up there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, and he said to him, say now to her, look, you've been concerned with us with all this care. What can I do for you? <laughs> See, when you take care of people. Come on, preach. I said, when you take care of people and say, the, say and do the right things, there's a reward in that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Now, just think what would have happened if that woman and her husband had been talking about Elijah every time he came to the crib. 
I bet they never asked that question. But Elijah said, well, tell, ask him, what, what can I do for you? Do you want me to speak in your behalf to the king or the command of the army? She answered, I dwell among my, oh, man, what a smart mouth. I dwell among my own people. I don't need you to say nothing to nobody for me. Anybody, anybody getting this? Yeah. yeah. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered and said, hey, she ain't got no children. She ain't got no kids. And her husband, he old, so he ain't going to have none. So he said, call her. When he called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, don't play with me. <laughs> don't play with me. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mama. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going? It ain't time, why are you going today? It ain't the Sabbath or a new moon. And she said, and she said, well, I thought her son just died. I said, I thought her son just died. Her response was not, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> My son done died. This lady said, it's well. Does that not look like calling things that be not to how you want them to be? It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, don't, don't mess with me? Then he said to Gehazi, get, a, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anybody, don't greet them. If anybody greets you, don't answer them, but lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, the child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was a child lying dead on the bed. And when he went there, forth, shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on the mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hand on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house again, went up. Well, can you just see that? And again, went up and stretched himself out on them. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child's eyes opened. And he calls Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite woman. And so he called her and when he... She came into him, he said, pick up your son. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody say, miracle. miracle. The miracle happened in what she said. Yeah. She called what she wanted it to be. And she called her son not dead, but she said, it is well. In the midst of whatever you are going through, Everybody say whatever. Whatever. In the midst of whatever, 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 whatever you're going through, call it like you want to see it, not the way it is. Things change when you change your words. Stop talking about how bad things are. You serve an awesome, miracle-working God. Yeah. 
And God, everybody say, God is able. God is able. Say that like you mean it. Say, God is able. I said, say it like you mean it. God is able. There ain't no problem that you're going through right now that is a surprise to God. I don't care who you are. Don't care what you're going through. It was no surprise to God. God knew the end from the beginning. So what you're going through now is just, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I got to rejoice no matter what my situation looks like, no matter what I'm going through, because I'm calling those things that be not as though they were. Can I get an amen, somebody? Now, this, this ain't just a fairy tale. This stuff works. So work it. Stop being so concerned about people. Love them. That's all you can do. But don't do the opposite and start putting your mouth on them because your faith gets disconnected when you do that. That's not a response to faith. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I don't, I don't know what, what, what you might be going through this morning but, or this afternoon, but this, this is what we're going to do to end the service on today. I, I know it's smelling good in here and everything, and everything's going to be good, or everything is good. But, but if, if you're going through some stuff this morning, and you just can't get your mind off of it. Anybody been there? Just stuff just keeps rolling around in your head. And no matter even how, no matter what the word even says, sometimes it's kind of hard to get this thing out your head. Well, let, let me serve you notice. The Bible does not say don't doubt in your head. But it does say don't doubt in your heart. The enemy's territory and his playground is your head. Your mind is the enemy's playground. But guess what? You're the parks and recreation director. You determine what kind of games is played in the playground. So when he want to play seesaw, tell him, I ain't doing that today. I'm playing another game. He has to play the game you won't play, not the one he plays. Why? Because, listen, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I might be in the world, baby, but I ain't of the world. In my world, I call the shots. Oh, I said in my world, I call the shots. came to tell you, you, he cannot tell you what to think about. Yeah. It only happens when you want to think about what he wants you to think about. But the Bible says bringing every thought into captivity. So this morning, before we leave here, we're going to bring some thoughts captive. Don't know what's been going on in your head. Only you know that. Even your neighbor don't know what's in your head. But the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Everybody say in everything. Yeah. See, I don't, don't wait till it's over to pray. Right. Yeah. He said in a smack dab in the middle when you're going through something. Yeah. Yeah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Yeah. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, yeah. let your requests be made known unto God. Listen. And the God of peace will guard your hearts and your minds through one Christ Jesus. And then verse 8 will go ahead and tell you what to think about. Think about things that are good, lovely, and pure, and of good report. And the God of peace will guard your hearts and minds through one Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Just say this one, this two-word sentence with me. I receive. I receive. Say it like you mean it. Say I receive. Hey, I receive. Hallelujah.
Amen. Have a good day.